chapter 14. Now, Sister Creasy preached about almost everything, and I'm going to finish it up if the Lord will give me the strength here today. And great job, and as always, from the teaching point of view, if you want to call that teaching. I call it treaching. Good word of God. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. I'm going to read several verses. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go to before him to the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. That was the ship that he put the disciples in. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled because they really didn't recognize him. So they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. And straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. So he identifies himself. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He didn't know that was impossible. You don't walk on water. That was impossible. Water holds up bugs and ants and spiders, popping bugs and and top water lures, but it don't hold up people. He didn't know you could sink in that water. Something triggered his faith. I can hear him if he can, I can, because I serve him. And he slid right out of that boat, right over the edge, right off into the water and walked on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter would come down, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, and was, he was afraid and began to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately... Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Now, he didn't say he spoke to the wind. Not in this verse of Scripture. He just said, and when they came, when he came to the ship, the wind ceased. Then there... Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. Just his presence calmed the sea. There's other uh, books that says he stepped out on the bow of a ship and spake to the water and said, Peace be still. But in this particular setting, he just, when he came into the ship, it just, the calm just happened in, at his presence. I want to try to talk for a few minutes today. I'll be nice. The miracle is in the storm. Lift your hands to him. Play me a song, if you would, Rebecca. Share it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I need your grace. I need your hand. Not for one day. Oh, I need your mercy. Come on, love him one more time. Let's love him one more time. Thank you, Jesus. We love you today, Lord. I need your mercy. I need your mercy today, Lord. I need your mercy. I need your God, help me to say the right words this morning. I need help me to say the right words, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Father. I can't make it without you. Make it without you, Lord. Not for one day. Not for one day. I need you, Lord. I need your Father, bless mercy. your children in Jesus' name. I need Amen. Your God bless you. You be seated. The miracle is in the storm. 
Life sometimes is kind of like an ocean. You know, you read about the ocean and, and you uh, certain things. And thank you, son. Uh, and ocean, to me, from what I, I see, I hear sailors. I used to hear my brother. He was a sailor. He was on an aircraft carrier. And, and I, I hear him talk about how, how rough the water can be out there on that ocean. And, and, you know, if you go to the ocean, many of you do, and, and you go down to the, to the Gulf and to different places, and, and we've been there ourselves, my wife and I. We, we, got, we drove down to uh, Destin, I believe it is, and, and uh, uh, maybe, or it might have been Gulfport. I can't remember for sure, but we, down in, we found an ocean anyway. And uh, we got out of the car, and, and, and we were the only one there dressed, and, and uh, so, and we walked out to the beach where everybody was running around and, and we looked around and, and the water was coming up onto the beach, just, you know, coming like in waves, you know, where the, we could tell the, the ocean, the water was rough. And I remember when I was, in, and we stayed about 10 minutes or so and got in the car and left. And uh, that was all the ocean I needed to see. And, uh, but when I was in Okinawa, Japan, We'd go out on weekends to the to the beach and to the oceans and and watching the water come in and and we'd rent a boat, uh, a glass bottom boat. We rented it, you know, me and two or three more guys that was was kind of buddies there in the in the company, and we'd go out into the ocean in that glass bottom boat, and where you could see the you know you could see the fish and stuff and and uh, one of my buddies he was so he was kind of rambunctious he just said i'm going to dive out there and swim under the boat and said y'all watch me and and he did and we did and the ocean what i'm saying is the water was rough and the uh the man that run the boat told us he said you can i can only take you out so far we can only go so far said so because uh, it didn't have one of these big uh, 50 horse Johnsons and all that behind it. It was just, a, I can't remember now, but it was a paddle boat, I think. Uh, and my point being, he said, when I get so far out there, the current changes. And said, right where we're at now, the current is going in. He said, but we get to a certain point, the current starts, starts out. And said, I can't get the boat back in if I let get too far out. And my thoughts were, well, whatever you do, don't get too far out. You know, that matter of fact, just go ahead and turn around now. Let's head back toward the bank. The point was, but oceans are normally rough. The water is rough. And uh, as quick as, uh, 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 and life can be the same way. Uh, sometimes life can get tough. And just as quick as a one wind stops, a uh, cloud starts rolling in and another storm moves in. And it's kind of a, 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 a continual situation. And in the way of life, in, in the way of our spiritual life, it's kind of like the ocean. With the way, to me, that's the way I view it. It's kind of like, kind of like uh, the winds are blowing and the waves are, are rolling in. And, and uh, by the time that one's over, another one is coming around and, and, and you've gone through another storm in your life. I'm talking about a spiritual storm. And, and it seems like it's just a continuation. And, and, uh, the, and, the, Lord, and uh, the servant of the Lord is kind of the same way. Uh, we, we go through trials and we go through storms, spiritual storms in our life. And, and sometimes we go, through, we go through literal storms in our life. Sometimes things just happen. You know, living for God does not exempt God's people from going through storms. We go through. We we fight spiritual storms. We we fight literal storms. We we go through torment seemingly sometimes, and and that's kind of the way it is. The storms came upon them. While listen to this now, the storm came upon the disciples that he had put in that ship to go to the other side. The storm came upon them while they were doing the will of God. They were obeying God. They got into the ship and, or the boat, whatever you want to call it, and they headed to the other side, and that's when the storms came up. And, and while they were living for God, while they were serving God, and while they were doing the, trying to do the will of God, they ran head straight, straight into a storm like they had never seen before. And I'm going to try to prove that here in a minute. But they discovered in the storm, it, was, it, was just, it wasn't a regular storm. You say, how do you know that? Because these men were experienced in fishing. 
And they were experienced in riding the boats. They were experienced in the storms. Uh, uh, this was not the first time these men had been in a storm, but it was the first time, listen to me, that it records uh, that they were afraid. The storm was bad enough. It wasn't the average storm. It was bad enough that it scared these experienced fishermen. They knew what storms were like on the Sea of Galilee in different places. Uh, I read somewhere where it said that it just in, in just a, a, a moment's time, a storm could just brew up on the Sea of Galilee and, and, and just be clear. One minute I said, it sounded kind of like Vietnam. When you was over there, sun, sun be shining, it'd be clear. In the next 30 minutes, it'd be raining so hard, you couldn't hardly see the end of your rifle. Are you listening? But they was in a storm Brother Ernie, like they'd never been in before because it never said they was afraid before. But something about this storm shook them up and they was afraid. And sometimes in the storms of life, we get afraid. We get afraid that we're not going to make it, that something has gone wrong in our walk with God. Sometimes we think because we're going through a spiritual storm, we feel like we've let God down. But I come to tell you today that storms are going to happen. It just will. Hallelujah. Jesus had just multiplied the five loaves and two fishes and fed the hungry multitude. He had, it had, this great miracle had just happened. And uh, when Jesus commanded them to get into a ship and go wait, wait for him on the other side of the sea, it was a command from God. He knew. He knew because he's God. He knew that they was going to sail into a storm. The storm didn't surprise Christ. It may have surprised the disciples. As a matter of fact, he sent the storm because he's the author of the storms. He sent that storm to where those disciples uh, were headed. He knew that this little ship, before, it, before that little ship ever left the dock, before it ever sailed off, Jesus already knew the storms was gathering. They may have not have saw the storm, but Jesus saw the storm. But Jesus knew where they were going, and he knew what he was going to do because he knows everything. Sometimes in our life, after we have a real good move of God. We've had some great ones here recently. People receiving the Holy Ghost. People getting baptized in the name of the Lord. We've had great services. My granddaughter, one of my granddaughters just a few weeks ago told me and, and grandmother that I'd like to see some services like we used to see on Sunday nights. I'd like to see God move. And it wasn't, I think, maybe the next Sunday night. People begin to worship, getting the Holy Ghost. When we have those kind of services, you get ready now because in those kind of services, uh, you can bet and you can uh, be assured there's a storm brewing. Because storms co come one after the other. <clears throat> And as soon as one is, is gone, another pops up. Sometimes somebody said they had went to a camp meeting and preached a great camp meeting. Jeff Arnold was his name. And he said, great move of God. People worshiping everywhere. Thousands of people, uh, three, four thousand people in, in, the, in the auditorium. And he said, and when he got home, said he was feeling the Holy Ghost. He said, man, everything was doing great. He said, but when he got home, his wife told him 10,000 termites broke their fast on his house. <laughs> While he was having a great move of God, a storm brewed, are you understand, and came blowing in. Did that mean he had failed God? No, that didn't mean because storms just come. They come to everybody. 
We sail into a storm every day. When with church service we can leave, we leave that service the other night as I was speaking of on a Sunday night. We leave that service, get ready because there's a storm brewing outside. Get ready because the devil was going to launch an attack. These times test our spiritual walk. They find out what we made out of. How you, are you going to hang in there? Are you going to live for God? Are you going to throw the towel in? There's a storm brewing. What do we do when the spiritual, when the spiritual uh, uh, atmosphere fades away? What are you going to do, ladies and gentlemen, when the choir's not singing anymore? What are you going to do when the spirit's not moving anymore? What are you going to do when Sunday night revival services has been stopped? What are we going to do then? We're going to paddle and we're going to push our way right through the storm. We're going to keep right on living for God. Why? Because as they looked out, as they looked out that night, man, it's hot up here. I ought not holler. I'm going to be calm. When they looked out there, the wind's blowing. The waves are slapping against the boat. I never did like to be. We have to go. We're going to go fishing. Me and Eddie Gillum and Joey Ballard. We had Eddie's bass boat. That boat ain't big enough for the Mississippi River, y'all. We got in the truck and we left that boat dock over there. Was that like going toward the Richardson's Landing? Is that John's boat dock? Is that what that is, Ellis, over there on 59? Okay. We got ready to go. We just got, and, I, and, I, and I'm already a nervous wreck. I, I don't even like to drive across the Mississippi Bridge. I didn't want to get no Mississippi River boat. And I finally told, I finally spoke up. I said, ain't there somewhere else we can go fishing? <laughs> Joey said, you don't want to go to the Mississippi River? I said, no. I'll stand on the bank with my rod and reel and I'll fish. Y'all go ahead and get in there. Don't, don't like rough water. I don't like rough water. They're out there in that water and that water slapping that boat. They're doing the best they can. And they and, and storms are raging. And then but somebody, somebody got spiritual and looked out and saw something out in the water. Now it must have been lightning because between the lightning flashes, they're seeing something out in that water. And the Bible said they were afraid. And somebody cried out, it's a spirit. And, and I don't know. I don't know how it happened. But they could see something in that storm out there in that water. Peter said, Lord, or somebody said, that's the Lord out there. And so Peter said, I find out if that's the Lord. Lord, if that's you, bid me to come out there on the water. And right in the middle of the storm, ladies and gentlemen, right when the lightning is flashing, did you know, did you remember March? Anybody remember, was it in March, that tornado come through and clean house? Remember, remember the wind? Remember how it was? You told me. Some of you did how you were standing out here. And you heard it. You looked up. And the storm, the clouds was twisting. You remember? The, the winds blowing out there on the Sea of Galilee that night. Waves are just gigantic. Peter said, if it's you, bid me to come. And the Lord said, come on. And in the midst of the storm, Peter recognized there's a miracle out there in that storm. So Peter climbs out of the boat, starts to walk on the water. The Bible said that he began to sink when he saw the waves boisterous. He couldn't, he couldn't handle it. He began to sink. He cried, Lord, save me. And the Bible said the Lord reached and got him by the hand and picked him up. And they walked back to the boat together. Now, listen carefully to me. Somehow or another, they, was, they got proved the Lord proved to them that he could do the impossible. 
because walking on the water was impossible. It wouldn't hold nobody up. But Jesus walked on the water. Why did he walk on the water? He walked on it to set an example that he could take the impossible things in your life and in my life. He can take what's going on in my life today. He can make it possible. He can walk on the problems that I have uh, that is impossible for me uh, that I can't do nothing with, uh, that I can't handle. Honey, them disciples were scared to death. Uh, those are men were because of the storm like they never seen. I don't know. I want to preach to somebody today that's going through a storm in your life like you ain't never went through before. It's a storm that you ain't never seen before. But the message is there's a miracle in the storm. You need to back your ears and roll up your sleeves and make your mind up today. You're going to live for God. Oh, I wish I could get your attention. When my friends are no longer there. When the music stopped. When the atmosphere has changed. When we go home from the mountaintop to a valley. Faithfulness to God is more. Is more than just a spiritual high. Faithfulness to God, it means to keep going. Even when the way gets rough, tough, even when the opposition gets strong, Jesus could have done a lot of things that day. Let me show you something. Stay with me for a few minutes. I won't be long. He could have done a lot of things that day because he's God, right? He's God. He was God then. He's God now. And he'll always be God. He could have turned that storm in a different direction. He knew the storm was out there because he invented the storm. He could have turned that storm away, but he didn't. He could have planned a different route. He could have got his GPS out and programmed it in, and the GPS could have led him around the storm. He could have programmed that, or he could have planned it different, but he didn't. He could have delayed the launching of the, of the boat until the storm was gone, but he didn't. Are you understanding? He could have given them some warning. He could at least told them what, what lied ahead of them, but he didn't. He just let them go right on out into the storm. Ain't you glad when the Lord leads you and directs you into your spiritual storm that he's always the miracle in the storm. He never leads you and, and turns you loose on your own. He let you go, but he didn't let you go to kill you. Are you understanding? We, he, done, he could do a lot of things in our life. You know what I read one time? I don't even know where I read it, but I read it. I read when they're training a captain or a pilot for a ship. When he's under training, they take him to rough seas. And he has to train in rough weather to pilot the ship. They don't train him in calm ocean seas. They calm him on the rough water. Or they train him on the rough water. I also read where an airplane pilot, he trains in rough skies to pilot that plane, to control it in bad weather. They learn him. Said, they said, you, you don't learn how to, how to pilot the ship in the calm water because it could almost pilot itself in the calm water. The Bible said he knew how he knew how rough the sea was going to get. He didn't change a thing. He let them go out into the storm. He knew that regardless, Christ knew, Jesus knew that regardless of what came upon them, regardless of it, he was going to take care of them because he led them into the storm. While they're doing the will of God. Is anybody 
understanding what I'm trying to preach here today, while you're doing the will of God, it's when the devil is going to slap you right in the face uh, and going to try to, incur, uh, to discourage you and try to drag you down and to make you think you're out of the will of God. You don't know how many times uh, the devil slaps me in my face. Normally on Monday morning uh, when the service, service is really not being that power packed, uh, when we've not had a blowout crowd, uh, when the Spirit's not moving like I like it for it too. That's when he comes and hits me right in the storm. When I'm already picking low cotton. And that's when he comes. He, don't, he didn't come to me last Sunday. We had a blowout crowd last Sunday, y'all. We had 173. Biggest crowd we've had since the opening service of this building. The opening service. 40. Ever how many years ago it's been? 25 at least. Thank you. Easter Sunday morning. We had this building finished. Had the piano moved over here. And the men come and tuned it. We had everything set up. And we pushed for a great service. That's Easter Sunday. We had 252 in attendance. Last Sunday was the next largest crowd we've had. We had 173. I wasn't picking low cotton last Monday morning. Are you understanding? I was excited last Monday morning. But there's been a lot of Monday mornings I wasn't quite so excited. Knowing God, still God. I'm preaching to somebody. Knowing God is still God, things just ain't working kind of like I, I thought they ought to work. God is still God. He's still the God of the miracle. He's still the miracle of the storm. When, these, when those disciples saw him, they understood that there was a miracle out there in that storm. There are times in life that God seems to, seems, uh, uh, he seems to send us a spiritual storm. There's times when Jesus knows that the storm is going to toss back and forth. He knows that. He knew that ship was going to be tossed around. He knew what he knew what they were they they were going to face turbulence. He knew that, that that it was going to be difficult for them. But he knew also that they were experienced. Listen to me now. Defeat sometimes can be good for us. Because we learn more in defeats than we do in victories many times. I hope you understand spiritual storms. They're terrible, but they teach us. They teach us more than peaceful times. Because I learn how to stand in a storm. I learn how to stand in a storm. Listen to the Ecclesiastes writer 7, 14. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. If you got a lot, thank God for it. When things are going good, thank God for it. But in the day of adversity, consider it. Just consider that. Adversity sometimes help us. You see, when things go well, we enjoy it. When the Spirit's good, I enjoyed last Sunday. I don't know about you. I enjoyed all that stuff they said about me. I enjoyed it. Thank you for the offering. I, 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 I think I may have forgot to tell you. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. I enjoyed that. But I got enough sense to know the storms are coming. And I don't learn how to live for God when the times are good. I learn how to live for God when, thank, when adversity is there. In the times of trouble, that's when we really stop and reflect on our lives. When, think, when things are tough. So Jesus knowing that he sending them into a storm. That wasn't just any little old storm. That was the, that was the daddy rabbit. That was the, that was the storm. That was the one that nobody wanted to see. You say, how do you know? I, I think I'm telling you why I know. I know it because these seasoned men, fishermen, sailors, seasoned, knew what to expect. My dad could read a cloud. He could read a storm. He'd go out at night when it was when it was all kids. We had this storm cellar. 
And uh, he, my dad would go out at night when it was kicking up, and he'd stay out there 10, 15 minutes, and he'd come back in the house, and he'd say he'd, one of two things. He'd say, go on back to bed or get your coat. We're going to the storm cellar. He'd watch that storm through the lightning. He could tell which way the storm was headed. He could just kind of read it. Are oh, you understand? These men knew a storm. They knew about storms. But the Bible said they were afraid. Something about this storm. They, they, uh, this storm that, uh, that like, they ne- like they had never saw before. Uh, it was a storm that feared them or scared them. We fight storms sometimes. We fight situations in our lives sometimes. These men had, had seen a few storms. They'd seen some things. They had experienced rough waters. They, they was always that, that God, all, God always brought them through it. Are you understanding? They, they understood this. In my ministry, in my life, I've been around a long time, guys. I, man, I've, I've been around a while. I've been pastoring a church uh, uh, 40 over 43 years, if you counted where I, I pastored before, I've seen storms come. I've seen adversities come. I've seen people lose family members. I've seen them lose their homes. I've seen them go bankrupt. Are you understanding? I've seen them when I've been in the rooms when the doctor would come in and give a bad report and say, there ain't nothing I can do. We've done all we know to do. I've been there, honey. I've stood beside caskets of, of young people that were laying there in a casket and mama's crying and asked him, Pastor, why did God take my child? I've been there. I've seen the storms. I've witnessed the storms. But in the midst of the storms, I see a miracle worker. I see the miracle coming through the clouds. I see him standing beside me. Every day he's there. Every day he's beside you. Every day he's with you. I've seen that. And sometimes it ain't fun. Sometimes it, it gets tough. Sometimes you want to just go to a closet and shut the door behind you. Get on your knees and say, God, what was you thinking? You say, would you do that? Yes, sir, buddy. I've done it before. I ain't been disrespectful to God. I just want to know, God, what you've got on your mind. What's happening here? Why did this, these people are faithful to God. These people are faithful to the church. These people pay their tithes. These people give. What are you thinking? What's going on? You ain't, you, you, you haven't experienced it because you're not a pastor. But I've, I've been there. But Billy Poole, in the midst of that, I see a miracle worker in that storm. Somehow he puts everything back together just like that night on Galilee. Just like that night, or Sea of Galilee, just like that night. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. The Bible said him and Peter went back to the boat. And there was a calm. Boy, that stood out to me. That hit me right in the kisser. He never spoke to that storm. The storm just bowed down to him. The very thing that the disciples feared, Jesus Walked on it. The things in your life that you fear, Jesus can walk on it. Because he's a miracle worker. It won't hold me up. I can't go down here to the Tennessee or the Mississippi River or the Hatchie River and walk across. on. I can't do that. I ain't going to try it. I ain't going to try that. But he can. And he can walk on my problems. He can. You know why he does it? He shows me that he can do it. By showing me that he can do that, he's showing me that he's got everything under control. That's right. If I'm a foot long, he was telling them disciples that night, I got the storm under control. I've got the storm under control. You know what I'm talking about, sister, don't you? There was a storm. But he showed you the miracle in the storm. He could have went a different direction, but he didn't. He could have healed it without surgery, but he didn't. He could have made things a lot better, but he didn't. But the miracle came in the storm. And I can testify to what God can do 
in the storm. Hallelujah. When the stars disappeared that night, the moon didn't shine. The wind whipped against the boat, tossed it to and fro. It seemed as if the storm would destroy them. It seemed like they wasn't going to make it because they was afraid. And when it seemed that all hope was lost, someone saw him standing out on the waves. And they said, it's a spirit. But I believe it was Peter said, somebody, somebody said, that's the Lord. And Peter said, well, if, it's, if it's him, if it's you, bid me to come. And Peter walked on the water, the very thing that they thought was going to destroy him. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Men that should have knew. Walking on the water was a miracle coming right toward the boat. I come to preach to somebody today. I'm closing. I got a lot more I need to say, but I'm going to close. I just come to this pulpit to tell you today that God has got your miracle. Everything is under control. He don't leave you. If you're sick in your body, God's got, God's got it under control. There's testimonies here tonight or today. There's test I could call on people. I could call Sister Jennings. I could call Sister Null. I could call others here today that God has performed a miracle in your life. A miracle. My wife, God gave a miracle. She had a knot in her body. The Lord told her if she would let the elders anoint her, she, he would, he would uh, uh, heal her. We anointed her. She walked from one side of the building to the other side of the building. The knot was gone. It's still gone tonight. That was a storm. That was a storm in her life and in my life. You don't understand. It could have been, it could have been a lot worse. You've got to understand that it was a storm. But in the middle of the storm come the miracle worker. He just walks right in and heals. If anybody here today needs a miracle, he's here. Stand with you, with me, please. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's in the midst of our storm. He's in the midst. He's, he's my shield. He's my strong tower. He's my refuge. Here's the lesson we need to learn. Listen carefully. I'm fixing to ask you to come to the altar. That which was impossible for the disciples, Jesus did it. He walked on the wall. Things in some of your lives right now you think is impossible, but Jesus can do it. It's not impossible when there's a miracle worker in the storm. The storm of your life, there's a miracle walking in that storm. He's a miracle worker. Lift your hands to him. Lift your hands to him. Gather around the front. Let's pray together. Not because I'm good. Not because I'm Just bring your storm. Bring it with you.